Hi and welcome to lesson 7 of DMAD's third free QGIS course. This is going to be our last lesson for a little while. Um, I'm really sorry but I'm just now struggling to, uh, to manage to balance doing this on top of working full time as well. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone that's been involved. Uh, we've now, this is only ever supposed to be running for a couple of, of weeks, um, but we've now got over 50 videos uh, and over seven hours of free QGIS lessons, um, which really take you from the basics to some really quite advanced stuff, giving everyone the opportunity to, to get to grips with QGIS. Um, I think that the stuff we've taught in these lessons will may perhaps not teach you everything in QGIS, but teach you everything you need to know in order to um, in order to to approach problems and work out how you begin to approach problems, which is really the hardest part. So again, I want to say thank you to everyone that's watched the videos, that's taken part, that's um, sent the screenshots into DMAD. It's always been lovely to receive the screenshots and see people progress. Um, and we've now had 17,000 views on the videos, which is just staggering really. Um, and we never really thought we would get to this. So thank you so much for everyone that's been involved. Uh, there was one last thing that I wanted to teach you before we left. And like I said, these lessons will restart at some point in the future. Um, but I can't, just can't do it right now. Um, so without further ado, I want to teach you the last thing, um, which should hopefully wrap up rasters quite nicely. Um, and we're going to leave off by just using another example from, from last week. Um, and what we're going to do is we've got our slope analysis that we created in lesson two of this, this course. Uh, and I'm just going to click reclassify by table. Um, and for our output, no data value, I'm just going to put uh, zero. Um, and for our fixed table, I'm going to change it. If you remember, the slope analysis gave us our slope angles running from zero to 90. And I'm going to just change our categories from zero to 20, which we're obviously going to expect the most because virtually everything falls under that, apart from really steep slopes. Then 20 to 40, which is going to be value two. 40 to 60, value 3, and then finally we're going to have 60 to 90 as our value 4. And I'm just going to click add row, oh sorry, I'm just going to click OK, I'm going to remove that and click OK. Uh, I didn't click value 4, I'm going to click OK. Um, and I'm going to save this. Just as slave classify. And then click run. And you'll see it's given me these four different values. And just like last lesson, I'm going to change my symbology um, from single band grey to single band pseudo colour. Choose equal intervals and then just decrease it to four. So we've got our four levels. Um, click apply and OK. Uh, I just turn this rasters off underneath. And what you can see is we've got um, most of our values are red. Um, and then we've got a couple of the orange, yellow, and even green and blue values uh, where we've got really steep slopes around the edges of the mountains. Um, and hopefully that just shows you that we can use this reclassify for anything that we, we want when it comes to rasters. Uh, and the real purpose of that was just showing you that we can, yeah, apply it to any raster in any situation and it's going to give us useful values. So that's the first thing I wanted to show. 
The second thing I wanted to show you is how we look at these values on a raster. Um, unfortunately, it's not as simple as an attribute table like we have in our vector data. And we need to use this button up here, which is the, the identify features, which we can also use for vector data. Um, but you'll notice it's grayed out, so we just need to click on our layer. So I've clicked on slope classify, and now you see I've got this identify features. And you actually have to click on each pixel to get a value, um, which isn't particularly convenient. So you can see these are all value one, I can see, these are value two, etc. etc. Um, and that's great, but after a while that gets really annoying. Um, and so we might want a slightly better way to do it. We haven't got anything as convenient as an attribute table, but we do have a slightly better way. And what we're going to need to do is install a plugin. So we do that from the plugin menu and then click manage and install plugins. And it will take a little while because it has to connect to the, the repository. Um, and you see, oh, here we go, it's come straight away. Um, and we've actually avoided uh, installing any plugins, and I've done that deliberately because people tend to rush to plugins when they're using QGIS um, to find a solution to a problem when actually uh, most of the stuff is already built in. So try and avoid using plugins. They, they can be developed by anybody um, and that means that they have a higher propensity to crash QGIS and stuff. Um, so I have avoided plugins purely because you can do virtually everything in the software already uh, and it's just very specific features you can use for plugins. But plugins can be useful and in theory they mean that QGIS can do anything that you could possibly want it to do. Uh, and quite often without typing all the code and stuff. So that's, that is the benefit of plugins. Plus, because QGIS is free, a lot of people are prepared to share their plugins, which also really helps. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the, a tool called the value tool, uh, which is this one. I just type, I type values. Just All you need to do is type value in and it comes up. Um, so select that and click install plugin. And it's a really quick install. Okay, so it's already popped up. And you see that it appears in my, um, down here, underneath my layers. It might appear in a different place for you, but for me it's underneath my layers. I can just click enable. And then as I drag my map over what we've got here, you'll see that I get my slave classify values of um, I'll just turn it off because it's a little bit complicated. I get my slate classify values that we, we just made with our new raster. So I can just see it go over this area of blue, for example, um, and see that it's an area of four. Um, and then the red's obviously one and two, which we already knew. And so that's, that's great, uh, but perhaps it'd be more useful if we did it, for example, with our elevation raster so we can quickly sweep over our raster and see that down here we have our virtually zero values um, and as we move closer to these white sections um, we've got the values where it goes right up to 2000 and that's just a lot easier than going clicking on if I disable that and just click and I have to click on each individual pixel if I uh, want a value um, similarly uh, you can see that it just does it for the top, so it's doing it for slate classify. I don't know if you can see in the top right, where it's only doing it for our slate classify, so you see it's got band 4, uh, and we haven't even got slate classify on here. Uh, whereas if we use this enable tool, whatever's on the screen, it'll uh, give us a value for that. So if I turn that off and turn slate classify back on, it gives us the value for slope classify as well as the coordinates for that value. Same with the slope analysis tool, it gives us all the values of the slope. So if I go over to this area of white, we know it's going to be higher. So we've got this 13.5 value at the moment on screen, whereas an area of black we expect to be lower. And yes, we can see it is much lower. So it's just an area of one. 
Um, and the real benefit of this in my eyes, if we turn that off and so I've turned the slate classify on um, and I'm going to turn the raster on as well. Uh, so this is the elevation raster, uh, is that it shows us it, multiple rasters at the same time. So I can be uh, looking at the, I've got the slate classify on top, but actually it's giving me values for uh, the slate classify, so I know this is a value 1, so it's between 0 and 20 degrees, but it also gives me the elevation underneath, so I know it's between 0 and 20 degrees, but it's actually an elevation of over a thousand meters at that point. So again, it's not as useful as the attribute table, but because each each raster is made up of millions of uh, pixels, then we can't have something like an attribute table because our attribute table would literally be a set of values for every pixel. And so what we have to do instead is, is, is come up with solutions, and this is one of the ways we can do it, by reclassifying and by using this plugin value tools, which can be really helpful. Um, so they're the last things that I, I wanted to teach before we stop these lessons. Like I said, they will um, continue at some point. I want to thank everybody that's taken part, that's taken time to do the lessons, that's taken time to comment, to send me messages and emails. Um, yeah, thank you so much. You've really made this, this happen. Um, and I'm really sorry to be stopping the lessons. Uh, but thank you so much and please stay safe um, and take care.